Thomas, your father left you something. So where was he? An Arlika. I'll call you back. Yeah, Pippi, I'm not coming into work today. I have a pest problem. For an aardvark, press one. You need marine and waterfowl. Try NYC sanitation. Don't get too cozy in there, penguin. As soon as I get home, you're going back where you came from. Oh, well, Mr. Papa got some smart ass penguins, man. Yeah, he does, man. They they know they but they know when it's time to take a shit. And, 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 when, and, and, and the other time when they when they try to figure out how to take a shit. And, and that third time where they still knew when it was time to take a shit, it's time to take a shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. Gonna say, these, these penguins don't seem all that smart. All they know how to do is bite and shit and fart. No, well, I mean, it might as well be Johnny Knoxville and a jackass crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it penguin pretty ass. much was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see they, these, these penguins, they, can, they know how to cut the TV on, mm -hmm. know how to turn it to their fa favorite Charlie Chaplin show. Mm -hmm. They know. I think they even understand some some human language because when you say something to them like, "Hey, now that's not good," they're like, oh, "You know." Yeah, <laughs> but, <he's> like, but, <laughs> or, <laughs> but for some reason, they need a human hand to help them take a bowel movement. You know? Yeah, they, they, they do. They, yeah. they they either they they are either, okay. They're either very smart about shit when when you get to laugh, mm -hmm. like you know, if it takes them to you know uh, a point where they got to like take a shit on your head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, those, get, those those CGI penguins are great. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, you got to pick them up and squeeze the crap out of them. <laughs> Over oh, yeah. a toilet. Which now, I was like, wow, am I really, is this where we've come to as far as movie making and what you can do with digital effects now where you can just grab a penguin at any time you want and squeeze the living shit out of it? See, that's, <laughs> that's why, Literally. That's why yeah. I like my penguins when they're surfing and tap dancing and all this shit and oh. it's just too goddamn much. Yeah. Or, or, or when they're throwing their friends like in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, when Mr. Papa's almost shake the shit out your ass. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he literally is going to do that. Now, yeah. I, no, I was amazed at how what could have been, you know, a, a delightful penguin fantasy mm -hmm. kind of just really took the time out to steep itself in bathroom humor. Mm -hmm. As we all know, I, I have nothing against a nice fart joke every now and then. Who, if it's who does? Every humor. now and then. <laughs> yeah. But when you've got a movie where your joke is to actually have a penguin that farts so much that his name is Stinky, because mm -hmm. you know he... It ain't the last time he's gonna fart. Right. It's gonna happen again later mm -hmm. on, and it's gonna be funnier than last time. Oh, yeah. You just you, wait. You better believe it. Shit. That, <laughs> it's, it's about that time that you get a food TV uh, magazine and start looking at some recipes for cooking penguins. Mr. Popper actually <laughs> yeah. does that. You know, this is based on a book from 1938. I was uh, I, I read and. You know something Damn. about the book. I mean, yeah, and it's a popular book. Like kids are reading it in in their classes. I think like third grade, third, fourth, the second, third, and fourth yeah. grade level. I mean, you know the uh, are in some cities twelfth grade. But <laughs> wow, I didn't realize <laughs> even then we're like that's a little bit of a stretch for them. I never realized they had books in 1930. I thought they were still chiseling shit out on walls. You know? Oh, co-host, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there was life before Mattel's electronic football. Well, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah. tell me. Yeah, believe it or not, <laughs> but. So in and, and that book seemed like it was a little simpler. I mean, in, in, the character in that book was actually a poor painter mm -hmm. who inherits some penguins, and these penguins start to like they, they start to eat too much. Well, this guy and his family they just can't afford to keep these penguins, and they got to mm -hmm. figure out what to do. Yeah, they're white elephants. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And in this movie, Jim Carrey plays a, a sort of a business tycoon. You know, <laughs> not, not much of a poor painter at no, all. No, no, no. He's he, yeah. He's like living in a high rise. You know, it, it, everything is peachy king with him. Yeah. You know, he's he's divorced, which is <laughs> an ad added bonus, and he doesn't have the kids, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Only on the weekends. Yeah. Now you think that a guy who would ha you know a swinging bachelor with a nice place like that, you know, the the, the most respected businessman in, in 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 the office, you know, that the next one to be like one of the top guys, you think that he would actually. Be out there, you know, bringing in women every weekend. I mean, because he don't deal with his kids. Don't wife don't even like him. He's just like fuck y'all. You know, I don't. I don't need y'all to be happy. So yeah, is, no shit. Is, is he not close to his kids at all? He it, he is. He, he is. Well, he tries as much as he can. That's the thing. That's that. That's the thing that the, the story tells you from the get go is that he's at least trying to be a good father, but yeah. he just can't seem to read in between the lines with his kids. He's, so he's, he's not like Ryan O'Neal, like beating the shit out of him. No. <laughs> no, no, he's not. This like, isn't I mean, stepfather. No, I have these penguins peck him half to death and all that kind of stuff. No, he's, I mean, he's just a, he's a guy that's, you know, full of, he's, he's, he's an egomaniac. Mm -hmm. okay. He's an egomaniac. He, you know, when he, whenever the, Car yeah. Carla, Ju uh, what's her name? Uh, Carla Gugino, Gugino, I guess. Gugino plays his wife and she's telling him, because he goes in like his daughter who plays by this kid, Madeline Carroll, she's like, you know, I want to ask this guy out in school, but he doesn't even 
even know I'm alive and I'm just feeling like the worst person in the world. And he's just kind of like, look, man, I'm full of shit, okay? <laughs> just, just get over it. And, and his wife is just like, you see, you just never listen. If you just listened. And he's like, yeah, I think I gave him some good ass advice. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yeah, he, he, actually, he, he ain't wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe his delivery was bad. That's it. But, but, he, but his he information. He's more like an uncle than a dad. Yeah. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Which, you know, you normally tell your kid, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I wonder what with the movies today where p- kids don't call their parents mom or dad. Like when he comes into the house, the kid is like, hey, popper. <laughs> oh, like, geez. hey, buddy, yo, pal. You know? <laughs> yeah. I just get almost like getting a beer together. You know? <laughs> hey, look at the tits on that girl yeah, down there. Like, yeah, you know? Usually you can't call your dad. Popper, yeah, that usually means you're probably gonna get your ass beat in a little while. Back you know? in the day, but yeah. not, 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 not when you're a white kid. They can talk to their parents any kind of way. Exactly, <laughs> that is true. Son, don't call me Popper. Call me that. Shit, Dad, come on, I'm not real friends. I'm a pal. Like, shut your fucking mouth and you turn on that Xbox now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Black kids are pretty bad. We just saw that Medea movie where that black father came in. His dad was like, "What's up, punk ass?" <laughs> so white kids are a little more. I, I think black kids have surpassed like wow. what we're starting. Tyler we're, Perry's we're actually learning. Tyler Perry's <laughs> learning from white culture. Is that yeah. what's going on? See, see that, that's, that's what integration gave us. <laughs> Bratty kids. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, how much is Jim Carrey's character in this movie like he was in Liar Liar? Well, he's not that bad. In this movie, he's... Because even though he's an egomaniac, you can tell when he goes home to that big 3,000-foot apartment that he has in the middle of Manhattan, he just walks in and he just looks at the whole place and he's like, sigh. And then mm. they cut to Monday morning. He's like... Thank God, <laughs> you know, I can get back in, out there to work where, I can, mm-hmm. where I'm surrounded by people. I'm doing what I'm good at. Yeah. So one day he is called in by his lawyer and he learns that his father has died. And he's just like, all right, so All what right. the fuck did I get? Yeah. You know, yeah. What, 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 why am I here? Read mm. off what he left me. And he's like, well, you'll have a package coming. It's uh, something that he thinks that you need. He gets the package later and it's a big old crate. He opens it up. All this dry uh, fog starts coming out of it, and it looks like it's the it's a stuffed penguin. Now, why they stuffing a penguin in, in like an ice? I don't know, you know. But mm-hmm. he puts the penguin on the table, and the penguin is actually not stuffed. It's alive. I don't know if it was in suspended animation. Yeah. Or what. It was, yeah. it's, it's frozen like, alongside Captain America. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. honestly, they should have had a scene where Boba Fett delivers him the penguin <laughs> and carbonite. Because like, I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. So. Yeah, that penguin came with a shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, so the penguin immediately comes to life and starts to imprint on Jim Carrey. I mean, at the moment it comes, like, aware or whatever, it was, mm-hmm. The fuck was wrong with this penguin? He he starts hugging on Jim, uh, Jim Carrey's leg, and Jim Carrey's like, "What the hell am I gonna do with a penguin?" Well, right when he's trying to, right when he thinks he has a way to get rid of this one penguin, he gets another crate. Like I think five, what is it? Five more penguins pop out yeah, of it. Five or six more penguins start popping out, and that's when the hilarity ensues. And that's when the movie wait, turns to Gremlins. Wait, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, oh, yeah, it does sound like Gremlins. I'm like, well, isn't this the part of the movie where he calls the zoo and the humane society, they come pick him up, and then the story's they, over? Well, okay, see, that's the deal with the movie, is that he does call, like, the Humane Society. Humane Society says, hey, this is not a problem. Yeah. Call, the, you know, call, <laughs> call a wildlife, uh, uh, the the, the wildlife department, and like, uh, we don't have penguins on the list. If we don't have it, we can't touch it. Mm-hmm. Call this department. Finally, they get to sanitation. And sanitation's like, hey, if it ain't dead, yeah. you know, we, it ain't us. We're going to take the dead ones. It'd be like, if, right, if it like shitting, hold, hold on five minutes. If it ain't shitting on the floor, how about now? <laughs> if it ain't shitting on the floor, it ain't our problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically. So, and, he, and the zoo finally comes over, and they're saying that, all right. Not only can we get these off your hands, but they don't belong in an apartment. All exactly. All kinds of things can happen to them. Mm-hmm. At this point, Jim Carrey's kids have come over. And it's the, the little boy in the family, what uh, played by Maxwell Perry, kind of little boy, Billy, he's like, oh, Dad, you know, what'd you give me for my birthday? And the daughter's like, yeah, motherfucker, you forgot, didn't you? He's like, no, not only did I not forget, but uh, I got something special. This penguin pops out, and the kid is like, wow! Penguins, all yeah. right. You got me a penguin, and the wife is just kind of like, "This is the best birthday ever for him." And I'm sorry, no, like, no, no wife would do that. No, 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 no yeah. wife would be like this. She's like, "What? You just get his hopes up because we can't keep no fucking penguins around." But no, this, this is movie land where it's like, "Oh, the kids are happy. All of a sudden, you've reached them. We got to keep these penguins." Jim Carrey is like, "Well." I guess I'm keeping the penguins <laughs> yeah, because yeah. my kids are happy. He tells them got the zoo. You got to hold on. My, my little boy ain't 
pissed at me right now. Yeah, and the whole time I'm wondering, well, what the fuck did this kid get last year? Did he, <laughs> did he get a fucking shark in a tank or something? I mean, wow. Last year, what, got a, what, yeah. What's he getting next year? A hooker? <laughs> no, he got filmed a, that movie. He got a chicken last year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when you say they, what, this year they gonna give him a fucking lion or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, you're just looking at this and it's like, okay, this is movie world. All right, none of this makes any fucking sense. Mm. I mean, even if the wildlife department came by, they'd be like, no, we gotta find a way to like get these penguins out of yeah, here. Yeah, they they. they, they they, they would would not tolerate a like oh hold on let, let um just wait a while It'd be like but no this, this is a fantasy <laughs> Sorry. though I mean yeah. you know so you yeah. kind of you kind of accept it for what it is and that's why I'm like you know for as far fetched as they're taking this story all of the charm of the film lies within the penguins which are a combination of CG and real penguins and they give you know they give penguins personalities that they, they would never fucking have in real life you know mm-hmm. uh to the point where he names them different names like oh that one's uh, well, cheap or whatever, stinky, stinky or, yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. This one, that, loudy. that, well, that yeah. one's uh, yes, bite, right. loudy, yeah, loudy, yeah. bitey. Here's that one's, uh, you know, that one's uh, uh, char- uh, chief or whatever. <laughs> one's in charge, and then Charlie, and then, you ready for the big birthday celebration fiesta? <laughs> yeah, penguin, six penguins. It's good counting, Billy. <laughs> Do they have names? Uh, this one's Captain. <laughs> and that's loudy. Hey, hey! Bardy, that one's stinky. He loves me. No, <laughs> oh, that's lovey. <laughs> and that's Nimrod. Yeah. And then there's the one, of course. <laughs> yeah. well, Stripe and Gizmo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't Mary, beat these yeah. penguins after midnight. Yeah. I'm, surprised, uh, I'm surprised they didn't get the names of uh, fucking Molar and Curly. Yeah, yeah, and there's somewhere. But no, because they have to have one that... Farts and they call him stinky and from that point on you kind of know where this movie's going to go mm-hmm. because when you're watching the penguins yeah all right penguins don't do this shit you know i i, I didn't catch the part in uh you know uh, uh march, march of the, of the Peng- penguins yeah. where morgan freeman described we had to pitch a, pick a penguin up to make him shit over the toilet you know i, I was all in the that. deleted scenes you didn't see oh that way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bonus features now but the thing is with this movie though it's like it it is pretty much because i mean this fucking story was written in 1938 right right i mean so it's so conventional that you, I mean, you kind of know, you know how the story is going to go. I mean, they, they're so desperate to look for a bad guy in this movie that the guy who comes, uh, who works for the zoo, you know, explains to Jim Carrey that you know you shouldn't have these penguins inside this apartment. Where you're like, okay, that makes perfectly good sense. But because the kid, you know, sees the penguins like they're mine, you know, uh, all of a sudden that creates a villain. And well, they, I never it, thought of it like that. You're yeah, right, man. It, it, if they it, had to it really hard did. to make a villain. It, wow. it, yeah, and it really did. Even though when you're like, eh, it's kind of hard to see this guy as a villain because he's actually absolutely right. Right. They belong <laughs> in a fucking zoo. I mean, not well, hanging out with a spoiled ass fucking kid that's, and, and this chick who can't get a fucking date. You know, that's that's what I, I thought. Watch the commercial. I was like, I I don't understand where he's wrong. It seems like mm. yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess the same Agent Coulson from all the Marvel movies. I guess he got fired from Shield and now he's working as a zookeeper. Well, that's what I thought. Like. Like at the yeah, end of the credits, right. you're going to have like Samuel Jackson. <laughs> you ain't the only one with penguins yeah. around town. <laughs> we need these penguins for shield. They're smarter than the average penguin. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't make, because who's that guy that plays? Uh, shield? Clark Gregg. Clark Gregg, yeah, because yeah, that's, that's the only time you can think, when you see him, you just think shield agent. Yeah. But, yeah. man. The I, penguins are him. <laughs> both. both. <laughs> Especially waddled off at the end yeah. of the No, it's not. Uh, no, it, it's. It, See the the it's it's a movie that could have really had some like I, I think could have been a better film. I mean, easily, it, no, yeah, easily, easily if they just had tried to be just a little bit smarter. I mm-hmm. mean, there's there's points in there where Jim Carrey is kind of I think he's trying to outact the Penguins, and mm-hmm. there's sometimes where he's funny, and then sometimes where he's annoying. Yeah. I actually thought he kind of toned it down. Like watching this, I was like, wow, this is the most kind of toned down Jim Carrey that you can possibly get. Only because I think he was aware this movie is specifically targeted for children. I yeah. mean, it really is. Um, and, you know, the, the, the bigger dynamic of the story here is about this family trying to get back together. Right. So there's a lot, after a while, there's a, there seems to be a lot more of that going on than the actual penguins. Because there's times when I'm like, you know what? Penguins don't even need to be here, honestly. I mean, sure, it's the one thing that's, you know, bringing this family back together, I guess. But as far as, like, when it gets into the crazier, wacky situations, 
it's there only to be wacky and gross and to have the kids fucking laugh. Yeah, and, and that's, keep I mean, them and that's what yeah. I guess I'm, I'm upset about with this mm-hmm. film. I mean, because it, it is cute. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm not, I'm like, I'd be lying if I said I didn't fall for these penguins at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because they, they, they do give them enough personality where you, you do kind of fall for them. Whenever yeah. you see them, like, really attach themselves to Jim Carrey, Mr., you know, Mr. Potter, mm-hmm. he, or, or Popper, whatever. Popper. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Popper. Uh, yeah. Mr. Popper. Popper. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, you know, you, it's like, man, all right, I like this. This is the kind of fantasy film that I'm looking for. You know, I really believe that these penguins are real, and I, I want to see them behave that yeah. way more. But there's so much that relies on these penguins causing mayhem. Yeah. That you know, that's that's what it is. And see, this this is the kind of movie that does not handle that kind of mayhem very well because everything revolves around the penguins going somewhere, causing trouble, and then we get the obligatory. You know, oh, they ran out of guy's legs and he fell. Oh, they knocked over this guy. Or oh, the person mm-hmm. that just has expression like, whoa, you know, all yeah. that kind of See, stuff. Th- this sounds so much like that era of Disney live action films, like the Shaggy Dog, the Shaggy yeah, Day. Yeah, it is. Uh, yes. the, uh, they brought uh, it back. The, that darn cat, uh, mm-hmm. the yeah. North Avenue Irregulars. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, th- thinking about it, like this movie probably would have worked if there was only one penguin because the, became, the penguin yeah. that you're introduced to is actually – charming and you're like oh wow okay i'm actually digging this penguin but when they introduce the rest of them uh and they're just you know they're just there to do their little sight gags i mean you you kind of forget about wow you know you make a good point because i i remember they seem like there used to be a lot of stories like that where almost even like et where you have like the one fish out of water that the family has you Mm -hmm. know attached themselves to and you root for them and you fall in love with that that you know that creature Mm -hmm. but yeah they got five of them running around they're all diluting that they they really do because the main penguin uh i forget they call they call they call well it was i I, I thought i kept saying his his name is his name is captain captain but but you find out it's not a he it's actually a she yeah but the thing is like you you realize that this this penguin has flight envy because every time it sees like an eagle or something like you see the penguin like try to fly yeah and i was like oh man that's really cute that's almost like a a buzz lightyear thing going on right there, where he thinks he's a real spaceman you see this penguin who just wants to fly and they kind of drop that after a while until this one specific scene at the end where it really felt like it was really crowbarred in yeah and i'm just like you know what you had a lot of good things in this movie but you, you just diluted it with all this other nonsense that well, really didn't matter. Yeah, I don't know if they were going to make these penguins. They're going to make them a group. So I didn't. I, I liked that there were several penguins. I just didn't mm-hmm. think the personalities of that were strong enough no, 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 to, to, to be not a at group. All. You know, like, Especially when you meet the first one. I think that, that was the problem with it. The first one had so much personality, but when you're introduced to the other one, they, they do their gags. That's all they do for the rest of the film, and they actually lose personality because you're just waiting for them to do their yeah. typical shitting joke. I guess yeah. if I if they were penguins that kind of work together, because like I said, mm-hmm. you know, the setup for a lot of these that you know the, the mayhem scenes are, are just that. I mean, they, they're set up in such a bad way. Like there's a woman who comes in to babysit the penguins, and everything's mm-hmm. cool, but you know, once the penguins start acting crazy, she freaks out, runs out of the apartment. Leaves the door wide open. That kind of like, well, I wonder what's going to happen next. These penguins are able to travel across town because they 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 mentioned the film that they have a a, a very song a strong sense of uh, smell uh, uh, or, 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 or they can their uh, senses they, are they, they home yeah. Yeah. No, yeah yeah they're able to hone, hone in or home in on, on, on like the person that they've imprinted on so they they travel across town to get to like Jim Carrey when he's over at a museum doing a benefit and you're looking at this and it's like it. and they get there they get across now either either Mr. Popper lived right across the street from the Guggenheim or they would these mm-hmm. penguins took a subway took a taxi hey man, I've, yeah. I've always heard great things about New York's uh, mass transit systems <laughs> even penguins can get yeah. on there no, yeah. no, no nobody notice e- easy I to think, read think, all pictograms yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think the, I think the penguins are in that video with that crazy homeless naked guy fucking <laughs> that racist guy so, wait, yeah I think I think I saw them like scuttling around going yeah, wah, yeah they bought a the train car and everything yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know when you it's so so when you see those kind of things you're just kind of like wow that is such a heavy setup and you know and it's a stretch to begin with but I, well they you know, get there in no time so I mean like, it immediately tells you okay this is pure and utter fantasy for children I right mean, and maybe really if the is, penguins yeah. had worked together like in the great escape or something <laughs> yeah. i mean you know they're a group you, yeah. like use their personalities to the mm-hmm. fullest you know looking at jim carrey like i said there's some moments where you know jim carrey is just mugging and then there's some moments where jim carrey just had me laughing really hard man uh you know back to that old jim carrey where he was just do anything for a laugh yeah and it's like okay you know this guy is just throwing so much out there i'm gonna be annoyed by something but at the same time i'm gonna laugh at something really hard and I, you know i liked him in this yeah movie. there's parts where he was charming where you you kind of remember wow okay there's a reason why this guy's 
well, why he used to be such a huge star. Right. I don't know if this this movie is going to help him, you know, in that direction anymore. But because I mean, like I said, it seemed like a very like toned down type movie for Jim Carrey to even take. Uh, to where I'm sure he was doing it probably for kids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, if he, hey, or, or, or like his his little his like cousins or nieces or whatever. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean. I was like, wow, this 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 seems like because in the theater I was at, there was hardly anyone there. Yes, matter, matter of fact, yeah, come and I just of like, it. is this guy's star like slowly starting to fade away now? Well, I remember you guys talking about in Living Color before we started. I remember on on those episodes of in Living Color, sometimes he would have his kids on there. He'd pick them up, mm-hmm. so you know those kids are grown now. He ain't doing oh, it. Did, for them. I didn't even know he had kids. Actually. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, oh, yeah, his kid. I guess yeah. They be yeah. They would be grown by now. Yeah. Well, maybe his kids' kids are watching. This <laughs> yeah, maybe show. so. And, yeah. and and you know the sad thing about a movie like this is that you you see a little bit of classic Hollywood in here. Angela mm-hmm. Lansbury oh, yeah. right. plays the owner of Murder Cat- She Wrote. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Murder She Wrote to her career with this movie. No, yeah. she, I mean she doesn't give a shit at this point. She's no. just like, Why hey, look, she? I'm yeah. At, She's, at this she, point, she, 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 her brain ain't working the same way anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she she owns a restaurant tavern on the green, and you know Jim Carrey is the the, the business guy that's sent to go in and try to get her to sell just so they could demolish the place and mm-hmm. she really doesn't have a whole lot to do in here. You know, it's yeah. funny because I didn't even know she was still alive. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was like, is that murder she wrote? Shit, like, I was really? wondering with you penguins. Did they bring well, her ass back they, with CG? Yeah. <laughs> there were parts when y'all described this movie that, that made me flash back to uh, Nanny McPhee just with those badass kids and um, and that was the last movie I think she was in that I, I remember seeing her in. Oh, she and Nanny McPhee? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, I don't know why she would do a movie like this. I mean, I do I don't know. Maybe it's the only thing that was thrown her way. She just really has to work one more time before well, she's she working leaves. with Jim Carrey. I guess maybe that was. I don't know. The, maybe, maybe that maybe was the one factor. Jim Carrey. I don't know. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure, is that what, what, sure hell was one of those CG penguins. <laughs> yeah, this is a. Uh, this is directed by Mark Waters, who's a guy who's he, he directs a lot of studio films that go one way or the other. Like he did Mean Girls. Okay. But he also did like the. Oh, well, this Chronicles. guy did Mean Girls. Yeah, he did me. He really, did, he did. He did a lot of studio that uh, films that seemed like middle of the road projects, mm-hmm. but were were pretty good. Like Freaky um, Friday, Mean, mean Girls. Girls. Yeah, those well, were well, two big hits. Uh, uh, Spider Wick Chronicles is one of those movies. I think is a pretty good movie. Oh, Spider Wick Chronicles. Yeah, this yes. got completely passed over. Yeah, I got passed. But and that was a movie where he worked with a lot of heavy CG. Uh, but then you know, he directed Just Like Heaven. I know you guys. Yeah. Have seen all these. Oh, oh, he's that. Okay, he he's that guy. He takes a lot of middle of the road projects that you don't expect anything from. Kind of from. bumps them up. Yeah, bumps like them he up. even did. Uh, Ghost of Girlfriends Past. Okay, yeah, all those, okay, all those same movies that we come back raving about, going like, "Wow, I thought that was going to be shit." Yeah, was- this one is not. I, I, I haven't liked all the movies that you guys have liked as much. I mean, most of these, like Mean Girls and Freaky Friday, I was like, "Wow, that's surprisingly good." Yeah, yeah. those are two good films. Yeah, man. this one is. Straight up studio film. And okay, he seemed like it really was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, that's maybe, why I'm surprised that tired. you told me that <laughs> there's the guy who did Mean Girls because fooled me. I mean. Because the thing is, it seems like this was like handed off to like just some studio director, and they're just like, "Well, you got penguins, you got Jim Carrey, do your thing." Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's for kids, so don't worry. It doesn't have to get too. You probably deep. stayed up for two yeah. weeks just smoking cigarettes, yeah. drinking coffee. But, but I, like, I can't do anything with this. Yeah. But oh. I, I mean, but then again, that that just shows to tell. I mean, that just shows that you know this is just a very mediocre film. Yeah, right. I do like the movie. I'm just sad that it took the turn of more broad humor instead of more imaginative humor. So I'm I'm gonna give it a rental. Yeah, uh, it's one of those movies where, honestly, I I was getting ready to really hate it. Uh, Only because I I, I heard nothing but bad things, and I actually kind of looked at the reviews, and it was getting really bad reviews, but... Shockingly, I didn't hate it. It just, it just really, it had its moments where it was fun, and I could tell, like you know, there's there's plenty of there that uh, you you could take your family to go see this, and it would be completely just okay family entertainment. But me personally. I was like, eh, I, I don't care. I don't know if I don't care. My, uh, you'd have to have like a ten, a ten year old kid or younger to really h- hold any interest because, yeah, the, the the one appealing thing is the penguins. I mean, shit, I laughed when a fucking penguin fell into a goddamn drum kit, came out, started humping a leg, uh, some chick's leg, and started farting at the same time. I laughed my ass off. <laughs> See, but, I saw yeah, that. You know, I remember <laughs> you telling me about that scene. I was like, no, what the hell was it? That was so funny with this. <laughs> that was hilarious, but uh, <laughs> hilarious only to the point to where I can give it a rental. So okay, right. you know, in the, in the part of the movie where you're supposed to feel the turnaround of Jim Carrey, it's it's not that he really does come off as crazy. There's uh, these penguins are laying eggs, and he realizes when he becomes obsessed with that one egg that is not hatching, is when he starts to kind of 
realize that I need to be a better person. Not that he's a bad person, but I just need to care a little bit more. And it's like you are like Howard Hughes, man. You're fucking insane. You yeah. Know? You got <laughs> sn- he brings in snow into his apartment. Mm-hmm. And the whole place is cold, and he's he's pretty much living in the elements, and he's sleeping at night by this egg. And it's like that's that's weird, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that is a point where even like his young son should be like, Dad. You have to stop this. No, they don't care. They're like, Penguin's dead. Can we keep him? And you know what, Leon? It's even weirder when you find out that he's actually the father, dude. (laughs) Serious, man. I was fucked up. I was not expecting that at all. That's probably probably one of the best twists of the whole summer. (laughs) (laughs) That penguin comes out with a Jim Carrey face on it. All righty then. (laughs) Yeah, man. Oh, Oh, that's not right. Pull yourself together. Your house is full of penguins. <laughs> Mr. Popper's Penguins. Hey, kids. Check this out. And shuffle ball step, shuffle ball lunge. Step ball change, step ball change, step ball change. Word. <laughs>